right now on Five on Your Side at 10. Tonight, pastor carjacked. The sinner, a 13-year-old boy. Being a pastor kind of falls to the bottom of the list when it comes to survival. The questions the carjackers asked the pastor before driving away. Plus tonight, municipalities and marijuana. Why some towns need to change laws to make way for recreational pot. But first, sleet storm over southern Missouri and Illinois, where it's causing travel problems. And when will this wintry accumulation melt? With that sleet to our south, we are in a weather alert tonight. Good evening. Thank you for being with us. I'm Ann Allred. And I'm Mike Bush. The weather first storm tracker was out in St. Francis County tonight. And we're going to take a look at Highway 67 heading north from the Farmington area. This is just a few hours ago. Right now, though, there are no reports of issues on the roads down there. In St. Louis, much different story on the roads than, say, 24 hours ago, when that black ice caused several pileups on area highways. Let's get to Weather First Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell. Well, you know, the sleet from this afternoon, and it was mostly sleet, stayed to the south of St. Louis as expected, and it went across our far southern counties. We've now seen those winter storm warnings that were in effect in the areas like Fredericktown, back towards Ironson, and heading over towards Centerville. We've seen those winter storm warnings lifted in those areas as the sleet has moved on now, just outside of the area for the most part. But it left behind a good inch of sleet on the ground. Places like Fredericktown back to Ironton, Annapolis, and that one inch of sleet or so is going to keep those roads extremely slippery in those areas overnight. You can only move that stuff so fast. It is heavy, hard to shovel, and it's there going to stay there with temperatures like these in the teens to around 20 degrees. So the worst of the falling precipitation is over. The sleet has ended to the south. It's mainly dry and cold overnight, but even in the metro area, because our temperatures will be back down into the teens through the overnight into early tomorrow morning, some things that were treated and melted today could refreeze as we head towards daybreak tomorrow. That's something we'll have to be concerned about, at least on some of the on ramps and off ramps as we work our way into your Tuesday morning commute. And tonight we're learning more about the two teenagers accused of carjacking a pastor at gunpoint outside of South St. Louis Church. Police have arrested a 13 year old boy. It is just the latest in a string of recent crimes involving juveniles. Our Elise Shonick talked with the victim and educators about steering kids away from crime. Pastor Mike Coleman says he wants to hold the teenagers who destroyed his car and his phone accountable. But I spoke to one expert in our area who says the community needs to be held accountable too. It's quite sad, first of all, because we are talking about young kids, like 13 years old. Webster University Counseling Department Assistant Professor Dr. Claire Martin is describing a sad reality for many children and teens. That's pretty shocking, but at the same time, it's like we've heard of those things happening so often. Pastor Mike Coleman was the latest victim of children learning the wrong things. There's two gentlemen, uh, young, young, young gentlemen, uh, probably 13 or 14, right in my face, the gun right in my face. I'm, please, please, please don't do anything stupid. I'm trying to tell him there's a camera up there. He was just putting a club on his steering wheel Friday night in his church parking lot when the two teens approached him. They will ask me to get out of the car. They'll ask me for my wallet. You'll see him take my phone and throw it down. But what happened next was shocking. The teens started arguing, not knowing how to start Coleman's car and drive away. He wants me to unlock the club. I had to ask him for my own keys back. He says the two lost control of the car down the street, crashing into two nearby cars, then abandoned the car and left. Do they have those courageous conversations to ask their kids, who are you hanging out with? Martin says parents, educators, and the whole community should be held accountable for actions like these. There's a lack of connection in families. There's a lack of connection in communities. She says many adults are checked out, and it can show in their children's actions. They turn to their social media, and even in the, when they're in the home and the kids are in the home, they checked out. As Pastor Coleman is dealing with this situation, Martin says it's time the community does the same. I think we can come back for, from here by being aware that it is a problem and reconnecting, being intentional about reconnecting. 
Right now, one of the 13 year old boys is with the juvenile courts. Police say they're working to get that second suspect into custody. Elise, thank you. A possible settlement tonight between the city of St. Louis and residents who say they were violated by police during protests following the Jason Stockley decision in 2017. The city has agreed to pay nearly $5 million to dozens of people. That's around $58,000 per plaintiff. Their attorney says they were not protesting at the time and followed police orders. He claims there are several videos showing they did not break any laws. Our clients were a group of some of them had protested earlier in the evening, but a lot of them just lived in the neighborhood, were out to dinner on Washington Avenue. And then to their surprise, the police surrounded them and didn't let them leave, arrested them all, pepper sprayed them, beat a bunch of them for no reason. A city spokesperson says they cannot comment because it is ongoing litigation. Tonight, two more Memphis police officers have been relieved of duty and three other first responders have been fired in the wake of the beating death of Tyree Nichols. One of the officers, Preston Hemphill, can be seen on his body cam helping to pin Nichols down and used a taser during the first confrontation with Nichols. Today, the Memphis Fire Department fired two medical workers, Robert Long and Jamichael Sandridge, along with Lieutenant Michelle Whitaker for violating department policies and protocols. Right now, they do not face charges, but prosecutors say all officers and first responders who are at the scene of Nichols' arrest are being looked at for possible charges. Tonight, we know it was a teenager who was shot and killed at an East St. Louis church. The shooting happened yesterday afternoon inside the cafeteria of Pilgrim Green Missionary Baptist Church. According to police, two people got into a fight and started shooting at each other. Investigators say 16 year old Devin Montgomery died. The other gunman and an innocent bystander were injured in, a shoot, in the shooting. Tonight, a five year old boy remains in critical condition more than 24 hours after being shot in the head. It happened last night in the LaSalle Park neighborhood near Soulard. Police say the mother originally told them a stray bullet entered the home, but investigators discovered the child got a hold of her boyfriend's handgun. Gun safety advocates remind you, free gun locks are available. I am tired of having to deliver this message, but we can't stop. When a child is around, that gun needs to be secured. You may need it, you may feel you need it when you step outside, but when it's in your home and that child is there, your gun needs to be secured. We have a full list where you can find free gun locks across the city and county in the As Seen on TV section of KSDK.com. Well, tonight we're one week away from recreational marijuana sales in Missouri, but some dispensaries may still have to require a medical card next Monday. Five on your side's Laura Barczewski explains the red tape impacting some of these budding businesses. Mike, that red tape is the process to change some city ordinances, which could impact some dispensaries on opening day. But most experts tell me it's a kind of a gray area, and legally the Constitution is the deciding factor. For weeks, Starbucks dispensary owner Chris Chesley has been preparing to open his doors to thousands more customers looking to buy recreational marijuana products. Talking with vendors, transporters, uh, making sure everything's going to be ready, running smoothly, uh, definitely staffing up. Uh, we've almost doubled our staff. Chesley owns two dispensaries, one in Festus and one in University City. The transition to sell both recreational and medical products also involves working with those cities to change ordinances. When most um, municipalities wrote their ordinances, they specifically put in medical marijuana. And now that we're going to have comprehensive sales and uh, our recreational sales for comprehensive licenses, uh, we need to adjust those ordinances to make sure that all the dispensaries are operating within uh, the, the correct ordinances for the city. He says in Festus they've already completed the process, but you city may take a little more time. It's just another thing to keep in mind as most cities in the St. Louis area are going through this process. You know, there are some municipalities that are just kind of saying, you know, hey, go ahead. We'll get this updated. We're working on it. We all know that this is what, where we're going to end up. Um, and then there are other municipalities that are uh, uh, very weary of doing that and want to make sure that every uh, process is taken correctly and gone through. Missouri Normal Attorney Dan Veet says legally cities can't stop dispensaries from selling recreational pot on February 6th as long as they have a state comprehensive license. Article 14 specifically says that uh, no local government can enact any ordinance which would place an undue burden on the operation of those facilities and attempting to stop them from operating would certainly be an undue burden. 
Some dispensaries may choose to not immediately begin selling recreational products on February 6th or may not have the state license just yet. So really, it's best to check with the store directly before showing up. And thank you, Laura. 613 million bucks up for grabs in tonight's Powerball drawing. The winning numbers just drawn minutes ago. They are 1, 4, 12, 36, 49, and that Powerball is 5. If you bought a Powerball ticket for Saturday night's drawing in Valley Park, check it. A ticket sold at Alta Convenience on Merrimack Station Road. It matched all five white ball numbers, and that ticket is worth $1 million. And by this time tomorrow night, someone in the Metro East could be $2 million richer. Yeah, it's the buzz around Waterloo, Illinois tonight. The Queen of Hearts has not had a winner since March. A 2017 ordinance capped the jackpot at $2 million. So this means they will draw tomorrow night until there's a winner. But it's not just locals playing. We had some from Germany and some from uh, Brazil. The one gentleman is from Brazil buys a lot. To win the full jackpot, you have to be there in person. If not, you just get half. Organizers expect to stop ticket sales tomorrow night at 6.30 at the Outsider Bar. They will draw, like I said, until they find a winner. Tonight, a call for a stay of execution. A Missouri man is said to be put to death next week. The alibi advocates say was never investigated. Do the shorter days have you feeling down? Tonight, we're helping you find a cure to your winter blues. Winter weather systems will continue to flirt with our area for the next few days. Why we think we've seen the worst of it, at least for this week. Tonight, 10 people are recovering after a drive-by mass shooting in Lakeland, Florida. Police say a car cruised down the street and four gunmen opened fire from both sides of the car. Two men are in critical condition. The others suffered non-life-threatening injuries. Police believe this was a targeted attack. The man convicted of murdering his girlfriend and three young children in Jennings in 2004 is set to be put to death by lethal injection one week from tomorrow. Just hours ago, St. Louis County Prosecutor Wesley Bell announced he will not make a motion to vacate Leonard Raheem Taylor's sentence. Taylor says he was in California at the time of the murders, meeting his 13-year-old daughter for the first time but she was never called to testify. Advocates for Taylor also dispute the victim's time of death and argue these are grounds for a stay. This entire thing was basically seen to be um, overzealous prosecutors, overzealous police deciding, you know, tunnel vision and they wanted to prosecute this particular person and they did everything they could in order to do that. Wesley Bell released a statement. The facts are not there to support a credible case of innocence. We will support a stay of execution if Mr. Taylor asks for one so his counsel may further investigate the time that the victims died. Bombshell developments tonight in the R. Kelly case in Chicago. Prosecutors are dropping 10 counts of aggravated sexual assault against the R&B singer. State's attorney Kim Fox cited Kelly's previous convictions, the high cost of prosecution and limited resources as reasons for dropping the charges. Kelly is currently jailed in New York on a federal conviction. He has another conviction in Illinois where he faces up to 90 years in prison. After three years and more than one million American lives lost tonight, a date has been set to end the COVID emergency in the United States. President Joe Biden informed Congress today he will end the national and public health emergencies in place for the pandemic on May 11th. So what does this mean for you? The federal government will no longer provide free COVID vaccines and testing. Pfizer has said it will charge as much as $130 per dose. Some of those costs will be covered by insurance. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Schlemiel, Schlemizel, Hassenbeff Incorporated. We're going to do it. The woman best known as Shirley Feeney from Laverne and Shirley has died. Cindy Williams starred alongside the late Penny Marshall in the beloved 70s sitcom. Her family says the actress died last week following a brief illness. Cindy Williams was 75 years old. Well, winter is here and with it shorter days and with less sunlight, you might be finding yourself feeling a little down. Consumer Reports has a few tips to help this season feel a little brighter. If you felt your mood dip recently and wondered why, winter might be the culprit. Less sunlight during the day affects how our bodies regulate serotonin and melatonin. And when levels of these hormones are thrown off, it can affect our mood and sleep. 
For some people, this disruption can be dramatic and lead to a form of depression known as Seasonal Affective Disorder, or SAD. Signs include weight gain, fatigue, trouble concentrating, and other things that may make you feel off and not like yourself. Five or more of those symptoms are enough for a doctor to diagnose you with seasonal affective disorder. But many more people have what's called subsyndromal SAD, where you're not completely disabled by winter, but you're also not at your best. Treatment can include medication along with light therapy, sitting in front of a light box each morning to trick your eyes and brain that the sun is up. You can find light therapy boxes over the counter, but Consumer Reports recommends only using one with a doctor's diagnosis. Some conditions that can mimic depression, like bipolar disorder, can actually get worse with treatments for SAD. Some other ways to fight off the winter blues include getting outside to soak up as much natural sunlight as possible, exercising daily, and try to push yourself to be social, schedule lunch with a friend. Even if you don't feel like it, these interactions may help lift your mood. If your doctor agrees that light therapy is right for you, it's recommended you choose a light therapy box that produces at least 10,000 lux. Let's face it, shoveling the snow, it's hard work. It can be no fun. You don't have to tell young Harrison that. A ring camera captured the Iowa preschooler trying to clear off his family's front porch. And then, ugh. <laughs> Fatigue, despair, boredom set in. Looks like me. Yeah, he just <laughs> dropped to the ground. By the way, Harrison's dad is a, here he's getting up, right? His dad is a meteorologist at the NBC station in Cedar Rapids. We all feel like that some days. We do. Especially when it's cold and snowy outside. Sometimes we use the southern method for snow removal. It'll melt. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. We yeah. don't need any more. I think we can be done. No, with and it it's now. it's not going to melt quickly around here. That's for sure. Not with temperatures like these. We are talking about readings down into the teens. We haven't moved hardly at all during the afternoon and evening hours. Basically between 17 and 20 all afternoon in the metro area. Now the chemicals the road crews did put down tended to get rid of some of the slick spots out there for sure, especially on all of our main roads. But now if you've got anything that's draining off and it's not interacting with those chemicals, it could freeze again. Plus, down to our south where temperatures are still right around 20 degrees, we've watched this afternoon and this evening as this disturbance has produced widespread sleet across southern portions of Missouri. And that sleep band now working its way into Kentucky, southern portions of Illinois, and into southern portions of Indiana. It is moving out of the five on your side area, but not before depositing a half an inch to an inch of sleet across across the areas from say Perryville, Fredericktown, back over towards Ironson, heading down towards Annapolis, Centerville and Lesterville. Those are the areas where you're really going to have slick going again tomorrow morning. If you can even navigate that, it's going to be hard for the road crews to deal with that as well. Plus, this is kind of a, a large system impacting a good chunk of the southeast as we go through the next 24 36 hours. So if you've got a flight in or out of Lambert, have friends coming in or out, you might find that they have some delays. All right, going towards tomorrow morning, the system south of us keeps trudging away. We'll try to see the clouds break up. I'm not going to guarantee that we'll see much sunshine tomorrow. If we do, it is during the morning hours with temperatures in the teens. Again, we'll be mindful of the potential of refreeze from anything that melted today around the metro area early tomorrow. Then tomorrow afternoon, a few flurries are possible, particularly as you go from St. Louis to the south. This should not amount to much. The air is very dry. Yes, it's cold enough for snow at this point, but it's very dry, so nothing more than flurries. And then we get into Wednesday. We look for a mix of sun and clouds on Wednesday, a cold start, but at least by Wednesday afternoon, we will get above freezing as temperatures climb into the low and mid 30s. The winds kind of taking more of a southeastward turn, but yet again, down to our south, we'll be tracking another system. Doesn't look to impact us, though, as it should remain well to our south. So the rest of the week is just kind of blah in St. Louis. All right, 18 degrees. That's where we are right now. 2.6. That's the lowest temperature we've seen. Seven hundredths of an inch of liquid in the rain gauge today. Storm total was eight hundredths. Uh, the initial part of that being the freezing drizzle that snarled things up last night. Rest of the week is pretty much quiet. Tomorrow we may have a few flurries in the afternoon. After that, generally speaking, it moderates a bit. Heading towards the upcoming weekend, we're back into the 40s.
All right, Scott, thanks very much. Frank is here with sports. Well, Mike, 7 and 11 are usually good numbers. They were disastrous for the Blues tonight. Well, we have a really cool hit and run coming up that will make you laugh. Stick around. The Sports Desk is brought to you by Jim Butler Chevrolet, the Midwest's number one Chevy dealer, 10 years running. In the old days, like last year, when the Blues were good, they had 109 points, everything was in sync. All the instruments were in tune. Not this season. They entered tonight's game at Winnipeg with a four-game losing streak. 24 of the 32 teams have a better record than the Blues. Scoreless second period, Tory Krug, great pass to Jake Neighbors on the breakaway, and it's 1-0 Blues. Third period, Josh Levo dishes to Nikita Alexandrov, and we have a 2-0 lead. Then three goals in 7-11. Seven, 7 minutes and 11 seconds. First, Josh Morrissey. Later, Mark Shifley will tie the game at two, and Morrissey will give the Jets a 3-2 lead. The Jets beat the Blues for the sixth straight game. The losing streak is at five. The Jets win it 4-2. The hockey world lost a legend today. Bobby Hall passed away. The Golden Jets scored 610 goals. Seven times he led the league in goals. He won two MVPs and one Stanley Cup. He also signed the first $1 million contract in professional hockey. Brett's father also played seven seasons in the WHA. Bobby Hall was 84 years old. An NCAA prediction website has Mizzou as a five seed in the dance and SLU as a 12, and they're playing each other. It would be one of the coolest basketball days of my lifetime. So today I asked the father of bracketology if it could really happen. I'm not sure Mizzou can get that high. You know, I have them as a seven today, and they would have to, to get that high because St. Louis isn't going to be like an eight or a nine. We often play hit and run with sports celebrities. Rapid fire Q&A with no hedging allowed. And Darren Pang is everywhere. Commercials, blues broadcast, and national broadcast. He's good at this. With the help of editor Bill Bennett, we give you hit and run. One great player who didn't score on you. That'd be nobody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One goal scorer who owned you? Uh, Joe Mullen. Scored four on one game, scored six in his career against me. Starting a franchise, a healthy Bobby Orr or a healthy Wayne Gretzky, both at age 22? I'll take Bobby Orr just because he, he could just do things that were amazing. One goalie to win one game to save the world from communism? I'll take Marty Brodeur. Most embarrassing moment ever for you on television? So I said, well, alongside Dave Strader, Darren Pang, back here in Denver, and moments ago, Stefan Yell tries to beat off Chris Chelios. <laughs> and I laughed so hard. <laughs> I, 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 and, and Dave Strader laughed so hard, we couldn't speak. It seemed like an eternity. <laughs> Favorite restaurant in St. Louis? Love going to the Capitol Grill. Um, locals, Katie's Pizza. Mm. Um, great spot. Another new place that I love going to is a place called Winchester. Lowest round of golf for you ever? Um, lowest round was 67 out in um, Desert Mountain. The most impressive phone number you have in your cell phone right now? Like John Hamm texts during games all the time. And, and I love it. And, and the team's not going well, he'll send a picture of his dog being sad. And, and, <laughs> or, or he'll say, Let, the boys need some gumption. Let's get her going. Um, but, uh, you know, when I do, the more national games I do, I mean, a guy like Freddie Couples every once in a while will send me a text. What famous person were you surprised that actually knew who you were? Charles Barkley's FaceTiming me. And all he said was, welcome to the team, little fella. <laughs> <laughs> he is one of a kind and great for St. Louis. He is. All right. Thanks, Frank. Well, the matchup is set for the big game tonight. Snacks that won't sack your Super Bowl party budget. They're seeing red in Kansas City. It's because, of course, the Chiefs are headed to the Super Bowl. Today, AFC Championship banners and signs went up all around town. This is the Chiefs' third Super Bowl appearance in four years. They'll take on the Philadelphia Eagles on February 12th. 
Some of your favorite Super Bowl snacks are going to cost you less this year. Something will cost you less. Yes, according to Wells Fargo, pound of chicken wings are down 22% from last year. Avocados for your guac, those are also at bargain prices right now. But chips, those are up about 22%. The front of the Anheuser-Busch Brewery is getting a makeover. The giant mural of the world-famous Budweiser Clydesdales and Hitch is set to be replaced this week. Local artist Phil Jarvis is behind the refresh, which is part of the Clydesdales' 90th anniversary. Cool to watch that speed up and see him yeah. do it. There you have it. Five on your side at 10. The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon is next. Jimmy's guests tonight, Austin Butler and Rob Gronkowski. Start your day with Today in St. Louis at 4 a.m and have a great tomorrow.